Well, it's December in Wisconsin. There's snow coming, and I think this tractor's missing something. Oh, yeah. Let's figure out how to put this thing on. All right, guys. So today we are throwing the snow thrower on the Case Garden Tractor. This is an L84 snowblower. Um, it is 48 inches wide, so it's a big guy. Uh, it's not that hard to put on. It's going to be similar for all 4 Series and 2 Series garden tractors. So let's get it. All right, guys. So I pulled the snow thrower out from its wintertime location. I just keep it on 2x4s and tuck it in the corner of my garage uh, in the summertime. So right now I do have the lift arm, which is this guy right here. I have it detached along with the shoe control. Um, I also have that detached. So if you're new to this, it's probably why you're watching this video. Uh, you are going to need a different belt than your mower deck belt. So this right here I picked up at Tractor Supply. It's a half inch by 81 Kevlar belt by Husky. So uh, there's kind of a little debate on it of which belt to use and which belt not to use. I know uh, Case made their own belts back in the day, and now they don't make them anymore. Uh, so I believe that was a half, like an 80 and a half. So this does work. Uh, this is what I used last year, uh, and I just got a new belt for this year. So let's get her on. All right, really quick before we get her on there. Uh, these are called skid shoes. There's one on each side of the snow thrower. Um, Sometimes when you pick up one of these uh, snow throwers off Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, they might not come with it. You need to have these. Um, if they are turned out like how they are here, this is for concrete. So concrete, uh, drive, any kind of driveway um, that is not gravel. Now, if you, you can take these off. There's two mounting bolts in here. Same on the other side. Just do a 180 with it, and it goes on the inside. Um, that is for if you have a gravel driveway. Now, if you don't use these, you're going to scratch the crap out of your driveway, especially if you have a concrete driveway, okay? So make sure you have the skid shoes on there in the proper uh, location for whatever uh, your driveway or whatever your snow blowing is. All right, so this is how I store mine. It is all in one piece with the mule drive the mounting bracket. So the first thing you want to do is make sure these little indents, these holes, same thing on the other side right here. Yes. You can see I'm in underneath the tractor on the back side right now. There's these guys right here. These bolts coming out and they're stationary. That's where this is supposed to go into. So you have to angle that up and go right in there. All right, so go ahead and start sliding the whole unit closer on both sides. Make sure the drive is up. I'm gonna have to lift the entire lower up. Get the indents right into where the stationary bolts are and push your whole unit in. All right. Now you have the mounting bracket in the anchor pins. So this part of the mounting bracket right here needs to go into the quick connect area. So this quick connect pin, if it is engaged, pull it out, put it up a little bit. You'll see the little track it goes in. It holds it in place right there. So do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and lift your snow thrower up into place. Quick, quick connect pin, engage it. Kind of have to go back and forth, it's engaged. Now your other side should be ready to go. If not, just shimmy it a little bit. Push, and you're in place. All right, so at this time, your snow thrower is connected to your tractor, and we need to get the lift arm and the shoot rod installed and so you can lift the bucket up and down. So. How I store my snow thrower in the summertime, I disconnect the lift arm, which is right here in my right hand, and in my left hand, the shoot rod control. I believe that's what it's called. So we need to connect this to the chute itself. So the goal is here is to get this hook interchanged with this hook right here so you can make the chute go left and right. So best way I found to do this is take your rod, make it vertical up in the air, Kind of come right through halfway to where you can see 
where the hooks are towards each other, they come up in the middle of the stationary hook and then take the rod, start to turn it back towards the tractor and then the whole thing down to the back of the tractor. Now you've got control. Now we need to get the shoot rod installed on the lift arm, which you're gonna do that before you put the lift arm on the tractor itself to lift the bucket. So on the lift arm with the, bend, with the bend right here on the right side of the tractor, you have a uh, bracket here that the shoot rod has to go through. So that's how it looks. Put it right on through, gonna have to maneuver it a little bit down and you're all good. Now we're ready to install the lift arm on the tractor itself. So now we have the shoot control rod connected and we got the lift arm that still needs to go through these two mounting bracket holes. So how I store mine, I keep the, the two pins that are necessary and then in between the two pins I have two uh, big washers. So remove the pin that's farthest away from the bend, keep it to the side. Then take the first washer that was next to that pin. So you're keeping the, um, the pin that's closest to the bend and then that washer right next to that pin. You keep that on. So now, go right in through the first mounting bracket hole. Take that D-ring, put it on right away. Start to slide more into the next hole. It sits right there. Make sure the D-ring, uh, both D-rings are on both sides of the uh, mounting bracket, and you take your pin, put it in. All right, now that the lift arm is connected to the mounting bracket up in front, you want to take the uh, other side of the lift arm that's closest to the seat of the tractor and install it on the uh, lifting mechanism itself. Uh, just like everything else, I keep all my pins in place where they should be when they're being stored so I never lose one. Go ahead and take that pin, put it down to the ground. And if you have to turn on the tractor, you can to move this up and down. Um, mine's in place there. Mine's in place. Voila. Okay, so on the left side of my snow thrower, I have a dry belt instruction uh, pitcher. Uh, you, yours may or may not have it. If it doesn't or if it's worn off and you want to see it, go ahead and pause the video. Uh, this is how we're going to do it. So as you can see right here, this is the pulley that is in the uh, in front of the tractor. So I start by getting the belt underneath the tractor first on the pulley in front of the tractor. Here's the chute. There's that first pulley, the auger pulley. So I just take the belt, go around it best you can. So there is two pulleys behind the auger pulley. And the one right here is a uh, the tensioner pulley where you can take tension off of that. There is a rod right up in front that makes it go up and down. So we'll make sure it gets on that one last. So you take the dry belt and you want to go up towards the PTO. So now we're on the side of the tractor here on the left side. So as you can see right in here, that is where your drive belt is and needs to get around um, the uh, engage uh, mechanism for the PTO. So go ahead and engage your PTO. As you can see, now it opens that up. Go ahead, once you get it up in there, disengage it. So now it's locked and it's not gonna fall down in there. So now we need to get it in front of the fan, um, up and over, and it needs to sit right here. On that guy on that pulley so go ahead and start to feed it up as you can see you're going in front of the blades of the fan you know you have to do it one by one it's easier doing this route instead of having to take the front bracket off but if you already have it off great now I'm on the right side of the tractor I'll do the same thing Make sure that they're not around the two pulleys underneath right now. Um, you will get that on in a second because it makes it a lot easier if it's loose. So now we're around the fan. And we want it to sit right on that pulley right here. So right now we're underneath the tractor. You want to make sure that the front auger right here in the bottom left of your screen still has the drive belt around it. If it doesn't, go ahead and adjust it. Now, remember, this pulley right here, we want to get the belt on last. So you take the belt on that side, make sure it's right there. 
Now you can see we got the belt on this pulley right here. It's going to the auger pulley right on top of it. And then the bottom of the auger pulley is coming to the tensioner pulley right here. So now that you make sure that you got your drive belt on top of your PTO pulley in the right place, it's going to be loose. So you come down, make sure that the auger belt or the uh, dry belt is still on the auger pulley right here. So it looks like we're good. So you can push the tensioner up or you can use the lift arm, which I'll use the lift arm, it's a little easier. You just push the lift arm down all the way and slowly brings tension. Go ahead and check. We have proper fitment on that pulley, proper fitment on the tensioner pulley, proper fitment on the auger pulley and proper fitment up here on the main pulley. So now, make sure that works. We're all good. And it's time to go test it outside. Case 446 with an L84 48 inch snowblower install. So, hopefully, we'll get some snow here soon and we can get some action shots of us getting out there. Um, we got all the snow throwers, I think, are on all the tractors now. So, we are ready to go. I do have a blade right over there um, for this. It is a, I think it's the 44 inch, it's not the big boy. Um, but Maybe I'll put that on uh, midway through the winter time and see how I like that better. I've actually never used a blade on this, only the snow thrower. So again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, remember, this is my way. If you have a better way of doing it, put it in the description below. Let me know how. So we'll catch you guys next time.